G'day, welcome back to Fading Margins. This is the first video of the channel reboot. And uh, what else could we do but uh, talk about knives? Um, that sounds rather precarious in the current climate, but never mind. We know, we all know what we're talking about. Um, anyway, I thought you guys might be interested to see, after six months or so, how my traditional EDC, I'll do a separate video for Victorinox. Um, now my pocket EDC has changed. I'm not going to talk about any of the other stuff I carry every on a day-to-day -day basis. Just the traditional pocket knives. And I've got 14, I think, to show you. Because I have a um, a team of 14 knives that uh, flow in and out of my pocket, depending on my mood, um, my mindset, what I've been watching on telly, what I've been reading in books. Right, uh, so let's get started. We'll start um, with this one. This is the... Arthur Wright and Sons Farmer. This has uh, stayed uh, true. It remains uh, a serviceable, solid, dependable, rugged cutting tool. Um, C70 carbon steel, uh, brass liners and bolsters. Uh, well made, really good backspring. Fabulous, uh, really almost perfect backspring. Um, Really like this knife. Don't carry it as much as I might, but definitely a keeper. Yeah. This is the uh, Arthur Ryan and Sons Tackler. This too is stayed, slightly uh, different blade, modified sheep's foot if you like, or heading towards a more of a Warncliffe style. Um, these days, Warncliffe is very uh, bijou. It's very, uh, very chic. A little bit Gucci, as they might say, and uh, so they, people tend to call anything. Uh, this sort of shape, a, a sort of worn, worn cliff base, not really, it's more of a modified sheep's foot. But uh, I like this knife very much. Again, it's a keeper, rosewood handles, same deal with the steel and everything else. Pull on this is horrendous. It's really, well, it's not horrendous, but it's it's not as bad as that GEC I once had. Uh, but it's, um, you do need to use the nail nick, you can't just uh, flatter your thumb it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a key, it was definitely, definitely proved to be a keeper. In fact, all four of my Arthur Wright and Sons ended up being keepers. And I want to say, from the off, I've, um, I, I had a, as you know, I had a dose of COVID and I'm more or less recovered. My fitness hasn't come back. Um, not that there was much fitness before COVID, but it's even worse now. Um, but I want to say that all these knives I'm showing you are working knives, right? I don't do collection. I'm not interested in uh, walk and talk and and, you know, I'm not going to be talking about blades that don't don't line up unless they clash. I'm not I'm not interested. What I'm interested in is a knife that is robust enough to sit in my pocket, take a good edge, hold a good edge, and do what I require of it. This is the senator. This is not the high end senator that they do. Uh, this is with the um, the workings across the spine. This is just the standard senator, but it has the tackler blade. Um, all, all the all similar details. It's a very pretty knife, but it's also very functional because it's it's very very compact and yet it, it fits your hand nicely, um, and it's built uh, to the same sort of standards as the other two in terms of usability. I like this knife. Right, Barlow from Arthur Wright and Sons. I always think these blades look like they're leftovers from something else. They look like they're sort of broken off from something. They're a very funny blade but it works really well it's a very very sweet knife this one's in um, buffalo horn um, there seems to be a, a shortage of materials everywhere I don't understand why I don't know what people are doing they're supposed to be running the world and they can, you, you can't get simple materials it's bizarre but anyway um, I was looking at arthritis the other day and they don't seem to be offering buffalo horn. I'm going to get in touch with them directly and find out. Um, but that's a very sweet knife. I carry that. It does everything I would want of it. It's mostly food preparation, really. Um, you know, cutting open the odd cart and stuff like that. But I'm not breaking down tons and tons of boxes. Or, uh, and I don't make spoons and things like that. I might do in the future. You know, I'm, I'm open to the possibility. But it's not really my thing at the moment. So um, if you haven't got one of these... Every man should have one of these, uh, unless you just really hate the pattern. 
Let's start with the, uh, the Sod Buster Junior in yellow. Uh, you'll see a theme very quickly. I don't need to introduce this knife. Um, again, it's a bit like that Barlow. If you haven't got one of these, well, why not? I mean, they make them all the time. It's uh, uh, what they call their CV steel, which is a 1095 hybrid steel. I don't know, they, they do something with it, blend or something they call it. it takes a nice edge. All their, all their blades are kind of, you can just about see that, they're the sort of hollow ground. Um, I like a hollow ground, like a buck, you know, the big bucks, I like buck knives. Um, I like a hollow ground on those because you get, you lose a lot of weight, but you, you gain, you can, you, have a very, you can have a very strong spine uh, and a very fine edge. Uh, with the pocket knives, I think I'd just, I'd prefer a flat ground with a secondary bevel, but no complaints, you can get a good edge on it. And this is a very sweet knife. Um, moving on, we've got the Mini Trapper in Warncliffe, you see what I'm saying? Um, that's not a an Etric uh, like Arthurites, and Ma Arthurites makes. I don't actually own an Arthurite Etric, maybe I should remedy that, but I just don't fancy it. I don't know what I'd do with it. Um, but uh, yeah, so you've got what they call a Warncliffe, and then you've got a California clip, or... Um, Turkish clip, depending on how you want to, how you want to term it. Uh, this is in stainless steel. I've said before, uh, and I'll say it again, I'm not a fan of cases stainless steel. I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't need to know what it is. I just know, I just don't like the feel of it. If you like it, great. That's, that's fantastic. And if you can get a good edge on it, terrific. And it takes a good edge, right? But I just like the carbon better. Um, call me prejudice. Um, just quickly... My mate Justin over in Horsepen Ranch was flashing around one of these the other day uh, and um, being slightly weak-minded, um, perhaps just in that moment, I thought, yeah, that looks very pretty. I had a look uh, and I took the plunge. So this is the case, uh, Sodbuster Junior in, um, I don't know, some sort of red jigged bone. It's very, very pretty. Not quite as comfy in the hand. If, you, if you're cutting feather sticks uh, with it, I found that cutting feather sticks with this um, did not compare to cutting anything with this. Uh, but for general purpose, everything else, you won't notice the difference. And it's very pretty. Um, the, I was going to say mini tra um, stockman. This is not a mini stockman. This is a medium stockman. This is a very petite knife. So you've got here, you've got a Spay blade. Uh, that's the that's that's my thumb knuckle, so it's very very small. And then you've got the sheep's foot on the other end. Again, very very delicate. Not delicate exactly. Sort of bijou, I guess you could say. Very small. Um, uh, and then you've got a, a California clip. Uh, and I quite like this. Uh, I don't know why. I like it because it's small. I guess it's very fine uh it takes a wicked edge um presumably because the hollow grind doesn't got so much to hollow out um so not as much distance from here to there but it's you'd be surprised what you can cut with that i mean i wouldn't i don't know that i'd be cutting feather sticks with it but in terms of you know getting into joints and things and i and i use my pocket knives for for cleaning joints i don't shoot um well i would shoot but i live in the uk Go figure, right? But it's um, but I do join things out. You know, I use it for food preparation. So if I got a bunch of potatoes, I'll pull out my pocket knife before I reach for a kitchen knife. Largely because I got more interest in having my pocket knives razor sharp than I have my kitchen knives razor sharp. So the kitchen knives tend to be dull. So I want a sharp knife. So the sharpest knife is the one in my pocket. Um, but that works really well. It's small. It's inoffensive. Um, you can see it's not even as long as my my index finger um if you want to go low key um you live in an urban area um and you know you've got to be a bit uh, circumspect might be something to look at right um i'm looking at the clock here because uh, um i'm only allowed 15 minutes so we might have to have part two Ooh, here we go 
Right, this is the sour belly from Case, and as you can see, this is definitely a theme. It's the uh, I've got a thing for the the yellow scales. Well, I've got a thing for the CV steel, is what it is. I've also got a thing about not spending. Well, there's a lot of money here, but uh, over time, but I don't like. I think for something like that, I can't remember what I paid for it, but I'm not going to pay eighty quid for it. Put it that way. Um, so. And I think bone, um, when Case gets into jig bone and all their different scales, types, and it all gets very collectorish. It's not my thing, and it's too expensive. If they did them all in a plain bone, I, you know, I'd be very happy, but they don't. Anyway, this is the sour belly. Bought this on a whim last year, as you know. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, other than I find it a bit thin. Lots of people like thin knives. Um, I just got to think about how to close my fist over it. I know some people say, you know, with a slip joint, you don't your finger up there. I'm telling you now, in my opinion, you have your finger up there. You're really asking uh, for a very good cut along that joint line, right? because you, you, at some point your hand's going to slip forward. Your finger, that finger's going to slip forward. It's not about it snapping shut, because you should be cutting away from yourself anyway. Um, Pretty knife, I do like it. It is a keeper, doesn't get as much pocket action um, for the reasons I've mentioned. Okay, so we're on to the Case um, Muskrat. I think Case make the best muskrats. Sorry guys, that's my opinion. And I think this is uh, the best because it's, it's the carbon steel and it's a reasonable price. Two blades, I've run this as an EDC works fine it works really well you just uh, you did, what i did was i decided that uh, i think it was the one with the on the side of the badge was my everyday use for cutting up boxes and making you know basically making a mess whatever i was doing and this one was for food preparation uh so i used this one for my lunch and this one for opening my mail or whatever i was doing cutting rope whatever um I was put on, put on to, switched on to uh, muskrats by the, the now late gentleman from Abnormal Outdoors. His video channel is still up. Uh, some of his stuff is excellent and worth watching, and uh, um, a lot of us very much regret his passing. But that's the case. Uh, muskrat in CV steel. Um, so that's a nice little knife. Finally, um, not, is this the latest acquisition? Yes, I think this is in, by type it is. This is the signature knife for case. Also in CV, also in yellow handle, this is the case trapper, the full size case trapper. And I have measured this knife and measured this knife and it is, and both these blades, despite their the seemingly enormous scale, are uh, three inches cutting edge. You could have a row, you right? but um, they're just it's very large, but they are. It is you. It by my measuring and my understanding, it's UK legal. Um, I I don't know. I bought one because I thought I should have one. It doesn't get a lot of pocket carry, um, but it's not going anywhere. Put it that way. Uh, and those blades, um, really, really useful.